is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. I got a word for you um, found in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. You know, oftentimes when the Lord wakes me up in the morning, he either wakes me up with a song or with a thought, you know, a word. And so the other morning I heard the spirit of the Lord say, where there is a will, there is a way. And for a couple of days, I have pondered this and, you know, in an effort to really dig deep and really understand what God was saying to me, what I believe he was saying to me or what I believe I heard. And as I was studying God's word, again, that's how I was led over to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, you know, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. And as I began to study that chapter and read, I landed on the 12th chapter in verse 9, where the apostle said, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I came to let someone know today that when you surrender your will over to his way, you will see the miraculous happen in your life. You know, Paul wasn't too happy with some of the things that he had going on in his life, but he had talked to God about it, which resulted in an acceptance. You know, sometimes when God says, okay, this is how it's going to be, sometimes some things in your life, you're just going to have to trust God and rely on God for. And that's what happened in the life of Paul. We read about that thorn. Many people have made many um, suggestions suggestions about what the thorn in Paul's life was. Um, no one really, I don't believe, no 100% sure. Some say it might have been his health. Some might have some say it might have been his appearance, but we don't know what this thorn was, but Paul didn't want it, but God told him that his grace was sufficient for him. Hallelujah. And you know what? This lets us know that we must totally and completely allow God's grace and dunamis power, because that's what that word strength, that word power is dunamis power to work in our lives in order to see the miraculous. We know that there were some miracles that were taken in place in Paul's life because he totally surrendered over to the Lord. You know what Paul said? I would rather boast in infirmities. You know, his frailties. How many of you got some frailties or, you know, some things in your life that you need God, you want God to strengthen those areas of, you know, it might be your children, it might be your finances, it might be your job, some frailty, something that you want, some thorn in your life that you want God to move. But you know what came perfectly to let you know what God is saying about that in your life if you will just hear me through and then we're going to go into prayer i believe that you'll hear what god wants you to hear concerning your situation but god wants you you know in the midst of all of what you might be facing in the midst of you know the things that you want god to remove you know what if you would just stay humble you know how you stay humble? Allow God's grace to be sufficient for you. Allow his power, his strength to work in your life. Paul didn't let whatever it was that his thorn was, he didn't let that stop him. If we look at the life of Paul, he was doing some great things for God. And you too can do great things for God. You too, hallelujah, can allow the glory of God to work in your life. The power, you know, to rest upon you like a tent to cover you when you surrender your will to God. Hallelujah. And just perhaps when people see you, they won't just see the struggles, but they'll see the miraculous power of God working in you. It'll be more prevalent than those things that, you know, the enemy is trying to use to stop you. So I say prophetically to you today, by the word of God, give your will over to God who has provided, you know, a way that we might live, which is through Jesus, who is the way 
the truth and the life. And just like Paul, you will get to see the power of God and his grace working in you and through you. Where there is a will that has been surrendered to God, uh, there is a way. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And you will get to see great things in your life if you allow him to work through you. Amen. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you today, Father. And I come thanking you and praising you, Father God, for all that you have done for us, Lord. I thank you today, even as it's Thanksgiving, Lord. I thank you, God, for allowing us another year, Father, to give you praise. I thank you for allowing us another year, Father God, to see all of your bountiful blessings upon all of our lives. I thank you, Father God, that you have never left us, nor have you forsaken us, Father. Thank you, Father God, that you have loved us with such a great love and such a great uh, compassion, Father God. Uh, you have ordered our steps this year, Father God. Uh, you have, God, remained true and faithful in our lives, Father God. You have not allowed the devil to have his way in our lives, Father God, but you have put a hedge of protection around us, Father God. Uh, you have handed it a You have raised up the standard against the enemy, Father God. Uh, and you, Lord, uh, have continued to show mercy and compassion to all of your people, Father. So we give you praise today, Father. We bless you and honor you and glorify you. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Uh, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you for your word. It's a lamp and a light unto our feet, Father God. Thank you for the angels that encamp around them that love the Lord. Uh, thank you, Father God, for all of the provision. Uh, thank you for our jobs, Lord. Uh, thank you for our houses and our cars and our children, Father God. Thank you for our ministries and our pastors, Father, and our churches, Father God, and all the people of God, hallelujah, that you have placed in our lives. Uh, Father, I give you praise. Thank you for the wonderful food that everybody can say, God, uh, that they have enjoyed today, Father. And for those that may not have had a place to go, we pray for the homeless right now, Father God. We pray for the sick and the shut-in, Father. We pray for those that are in prison right now that may not have had the pleasures uh, that most of us enjoy today. Uh, God, we pray in the name of Jesus uh, that they would receive salvation, uh, that they would receive healing, Father God, that next time this year, if you decide to tarry, God, uh, next time this year, Lord, they'll be able to celebrate as well, Father God. Give them strength, Father, to find you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. And Lord, I want to thank you today for the reminder that you gave us, that your grace is sufficient for us, Father God, uh, that your strength is made perfect uh, in our weakness, Father. As Paul said, he was going to boast uh, therein, for that the power of God uh, will rest upon him. Uh, so God, rest your power upon us, Father God, uh, as we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, Father God, as we realize that we depend on you, Father. You are our sufficiency, Father God. Uh, we can't do nothing without you, God. Uh, and so, Lord, uh, I thank you for the reminder today, God. Uh, and so now, Father, I pray your word over your people found in the book of Jude. Uh, hallelujah. The 24th verse where it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless um, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, uh, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So now, Father, I thank you for the grace that you have given unto us, Lord, that is sufficient. I thank you, Father, for the power that you have made perfect in our weakness, Father. I thank you even for the men and women of God, those that will bring forth your word over the weekend. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would give them, Father, a word for the people, Father, that the word would come straight from you, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus that power 
power be prevalent in the services, Father, that people would be healed, delivered, and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost, God. Let chains be broken, Father. Let the anointing I ask in the name of Jesus flow, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would be glorified, Father, and your people would be edified. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless again the man of God and give them the desires of their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Stop giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.